Hello. The interest in small houses, tiny houses is rising very strongly and uh, I want to promote to get a step further and get rid of the wheels and go for mini houses. So first of all, uh, if we talk about uh, this type of houses, uh, small houses, tiny houses, mini houses, uh, I see this in a context of uh, well, development to move out into the countryside, uh, start gardening, uh, market gardens, uh, build your own um, small company, make clusters of family farms uh, and form a garden uh, town and that may eventually form a garden ring around a city. And so getting away from the usual farms, but this could be a new town um, what is centered around what used to be the farm uh, but now uh, there are a hundred people having a good life producing high quality vegetables uh, instead of one family struggling to survive and of course then uh, surroundings we will have regenerative agriculture agroforestry uh, uh, rotational grazing and all these great things that are there and uh, this is about a concept to be um, around a city garden ring and there could be more and more such uh, production units that we can call uh, gardeners towns garden towns and or new town a new village whatever and the idea is to uh, well to get together with enough like-minded people so that it becomes very interesting out in the rural uh, you would need around maybe 500 to uh, two, 300 people minimum to make it interesting and viable to run a small school to have a small business running do marketing together to have elderly care and so on so that's um, what I wanted to start with, because if small houses are simply that uh, all the surroundings of cities are uh, just um, well uh, filled with uh, small houses, uh, adding to the urban sprawl that is horrible already, that's not the idea. The idea is to support reversing this over um, uh, urbanization and also reverse in my, in, environmental migration by forming such cluster villages everywhere so that people are resilient in their own place, building their soils, building their food base, rest, uh, restoring the water cycle, all that can be done and um, for that people need housing that is uh, affordable, that can be built with means uh, from the region uh, with local labor ideally and uh, be very very energy efficient well with that said um, I want to introduce myself I'm uh, Ralph Otterpol I'm researcher in the field of water wastewater uh, but now also soil uh, restoration uh, regenerative agriculture agroforestry and uh, well restoration basically of, of uh, eroded lands uh, i'm a director of research institute in hamburg uh, hamburg university of technology and uh, we do promote uh, ways of, of restoring um, the rural areas that are helping to keep the water cycle alive or revive it the water is lost in many areas and this is something what can really counteract climate change because climate change the man-made part that's only part of the story is a reflection of soil destruction and drying out of areas and once we restore the soil vegetation cover um, then the climate will be balanced as much as we can as humans so now uh, let's jump into the topic uh, of um, houses and uh, there is the famous tiny house this is uh, my own i don't live there full time this is uh, now for the construction of a real mini house nearby and uh, i want to promote getting away from the wheels 
uh, they are not necessary and if such a house is sitting on the soil it needs less energy you can build thicker walls with good insulation and make it a lot more um, well uh, efficient also more cost efficient so uh, there is a lot of uh, small house designs so uh, one of the smallest imaginable is the um, 10 fit cube by uh, open source ecology and they are promoting a house with a staggering uh, uh, three by three by three meters what equals around uh, 10 by 10 by 10 feet um, and uh, this house is uh, having um, at the inside there is uh, on the over the uh, bathroom there is uh, the sort of sleeping space and why not starting so small so that's relatively easy to build uh, the funds for that are easy to raise without going to a bank and it can be very energy efficient and uh, open source ecology has done a good work here um, so that's the extreme we mustn't be that extreme so there is the uh, own home by own world uh, Clemens Jakob in uh, southern Germany and this is fully uh, well transportable uh, parts and they can be assembled on the site and this house is uh, really beautiful very very energy efficient uh, especially it has uh, autarky uh, on water and energy I've stayed in it three times and it's really great um, so that's 18 square meters and that's something where you can say uh, that's good for one person or a couple and uh, well so that's a step forward into small houses so no wheels it sits on the ground and has thicker walls than you can build on a, a tiny on wheels um, there are dome structures as well here an example from Russia uh, so they have examples of 44 or 50 square meters to get to square feet uh, it's around times 10 so that would equal around 500 uh, square feet uh, and uh, this is also well nice type of design uh, so but with these domes um, for me it's a bit tricky because all uh, rain is falling on all of the structure so I like to have houses uh, with, uh, with a good roof so that we have uh, protection of the walls from the elements to make it long lasting um, these domes can be found in many places around the world this is an example from northern germany and this dome is actually uh, my neighbor it's a dome that is used for healing work so it's a sound uh, dome with, with crazy effects inside on on um well if you do uh, when you speak when you sing um, and uh, it's it's absolutely uh, crazy so this is going into sacred uh, geometry and these effects it's stunning physics and uh, so that's uh, really nice and here in front of this uh, there is a tiny house from the market um, and uh, those are very very popular and but still they are pretty expensive and they don't live that long um, then also in the conventional uh, house market so this is from a, a conventional company they are building houses uh, just for uh, normal people and they are going into a sector now with offering houses 45, uh, 45 square meters so it's a bit less than 500 square feet also uh, well quite quite good um, designs uh, and uh, they have built some of those the interest is rising because people uh, have less money than also uh, people that are getting older 
that are alone or just a couple is left. They don't need many um, uh, rooms, uh, a lot of uh, sleeping rooms. And so that's a good way to go forward. And uh, this is uh, a design from a master thesis where I have co-supervised. Um, and this is a modular house. So this one that is fully transportable and this is this modest module, but you can put several of them together to accommodate more people. The small one is rather for one or two people. And um, this one is made for transportation. Uh, so it gets wheels only when it needs them. And so one of the elements would be this and the other element would be this one. And then you put it on a a uh, container truck when need uh, arises, but you don't need all these wheels all the time. Um, and um, that's by uh, Milan Pipno and Jan Bock. And uh, so then uh, this is my own design. Um, and this also shows that the idea is to be inside of uh, a market garden and to produce high quality food, not only for uh, yourself, your own family, but also for people around. And if you cluster these farms, you can also supply the city with great food and also with uh, uh, food trees like sweet chestnut, uh, walnut, uh, hazel and so on. Um, all right, so that's an overview. And one of the things is that inside a city, it's horrible to live on a very small space in most cases. But in the rural area, you, you do have all this uh, space around. You have a big terrace, you can go around and you can have a, a greenhouse with lots of space. And in a greenhouse, you can also have additional space for winter time. This is where I visited colleagues in uh, Sweden. In January, we were having uh, dinner outside. So this is, uh, well, outside uh, minus 10 degrees, far below freezing, uh, 10 degrees Celsius and far below freezing. And it was still uh, relatively pleasant inside. Okay, so now, to get into the idea. Uh, we want to get away from the big uh, houses that we usually have that are having a very, very big living room, then a staircase that goes uh, through inside the room. So you have to enter and go through. So uh, there is uh, very little you can do except using it uh, as a family house and they are having a big footprint it costs a lot of money uh, you m well many people make themselves uh, dependent of banks for their whole lifetime and uh, this is something what is uh, not very wise so we can reduce easily to much smaller footprint uh, as a module and if we need more space we we make a, another one make a greenhouse in between or we put uh, one on top of the other uh, whatever and uh, so that's the uh, the basic idea and uh, there are some things that i want to point out as well so i will explain this in more detail um, and uh, one thing i want to uh, well, make clear uh, houses that are built today are very often uh, made just for a few decades and uh, very often they are for special landfill uh, expensive uh, to get rid of after only maybe 40, 50 years, what is uh, incredibly short uh, time. And uh, so, I'm promoting uh, houses that have a lifespan, useful lifetime of easily more than 500 uh, years. 
So, uh, if that sounds crazy, uh, it's rather normal uh, to build houses that are long lasting. I actually, I, I was a co-owner of a house um, that was around 500 years old. And if you imagine to, uh, well, well, the investment you do and a useful lifetime of 500 years, the investment doesn't really matter anymore. So we could live so much um, better uh, with much less uh, investment, much less ecological footprint if we build for long term. And um, there is something what is well a prerequisite for being a long life and with that we need materials that are suitable for that and uh, that's uh, where I see three ways of building and this would be massive wood so that would be uh, walls that are only wood layered or however and um, that can live hundreds of years. There are buildings uh, in uh, Japan or Northern Europe um, that are 1,500 years and older and still the wood is fantastic. Uh, the, the key thing is to have a good roof so that it's uh, protected and uh, not rotting. Another great material uh, would be the adobe uh, or uh, mud bricks mud brick and if you build in mud bricks it should be mixed with straw uh, straw from hemp is great but also the the normal straw of from from uh, wheat fields uh, will do and the mix is crucial but if you make a good mix you could build a house with um, well with 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 uh, air dried uh, uh, bricks from from mud it could be a hundred meters uh, high 300 feet high uh, just theoretically uh, you wouldn't do that obviously but uh, it's no problem to do them uh, one two floors um, with mud uh, building legislation is something different but uh, you can add uh, some uh, well, massive logs uh, inside the mud or inside the house, outside the house, however, to make the structure independent of the mud. Of course, the mud has the problem if it gets wet, it can uh, break. So that's the big downside. Obviously, once again, water protection is uh, crucial. And also this can have a very, very long lifetime. The material can be produced locally uh, in many places around the, the world. Uh, the knowledge is there. And one thing is crucial. Uh, the Making the air dried bricks is the best way to do it. Uh, it's better than uh, doing these uh, sliding walls and and uh, trample the, the the loam in what is also suitable but the bricks are basically easier in the long run uh, and it's also much preferable to the straw bale construction that has quite a few downsides a lot of work and uh, it didn't really deliver on uh, well the, what we thought first it would be simple it's complicated construction it's not ideal and building in mud bricks uh, monolithically uh, is a great way and uh, in both of these constructions you don't want um, the, um, the 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 well, liners to to prevent the um, well the, the the moist from inside to get outside because the construction with massive wood with mud bricks both of them are absorbing the water and delivering it to the outside and all buildings that have a liner in between uh, for for the uh, fumes for the the water vapor um, they 
will probably not have such a long lifetime and that's of course true uh, very much true for the uh, tiny houses on wheels because there you cannot build uh, massive walls uh, the third one is uh, the well conventional bricks um, and they can be really good uh, they can be built also monolith monolithically and uh, of course there's one trick with the uh, bricks if you plaster them uh, you should take uh, either loam plastering uh, or uh, only with lime so no cement um, because then it becomes impermeable and then the water vapor will not pass through and from the outside once again this means to have good protection from a wide overhanging roof <clears throat> so with that being said uh, these are the foundations for lifespans of 500 plus years and of course local production local materials uh, and uh, local economy jobs for local people and so on much can be done uh, by your own labor and so on so that's uh, my take on uh, building materials and i've dealt with that a lot i uh, started my uh, professional life uh, with uh, becoming a uh, a mason uh, bricklayer and uh, not a mason <laughs> in, uh, in, in uh, the other sense a, a bricklayer and a, a civil engineer and even though I specialized in uh, water wastewater uh, engineering I'm still very much into construction I've worked in construction ever again and uh, have a lot of experience with eco-villages, ecological house designs around the world and of course the different types of materials they are uh, not suitable everywhere uh, so the massive wood is for the northern climates uh, mud brick is ideal for many African countries uh, um, South America um, bricks would do everywhere but of course they are often expensive they are requiring factories uh, but uh, these two materials can be produced locally with labor instead of uh, money investment and so that's a big big upside there keep being independent from banks all right, let's jump into the modular house, mini house, modular houses. And this is my um, design um, that I uh, have developed over the years. And uh, the idea is to um, have something more or less uh, built uh, in, a, in a square, because then you have most space from um, the material of course round and and so, uh, such designs uh, are even better from material to interior but uh, from a practical point of view this is much uh, easier to be constructed uh, but the edges can be rounded to, to make it more more beautiful i will talk more about that later and uh, so that's something where beauty should come we have a wide overhanging roof and uh, this is a uh, design with a, uh, a pyramid roof uh, what is quite nice uh, but other designs are possible and the nice thing is uh, we have towards the sunny side we have a lot of glass so uh, this will be, be the biggest uh, heating power uh, because in winter time when it's very cold uh, in winter regions of course in uh, northern latitudes uh, we have a lot of sunshine while it's very cold so if you look behind me there's a river that is frozen and it's sunny outside so this will contribute to heating up uh, such a house and a small footprint is easier to be heated up 
about the um, well the designs and the um, different ways of uh, modules I will talk later uh, but just a word on the on the greenhouse uh, it's a greenhouse liking in agriculture. You can cultivate plants there, of course, but it shouldn't be too much because then there will be a lot of moisture. And this unit can also be your uh, solar heater. So uh, active uh, part of the uh, solar uh, energy generation. Okay, so that's the uh, module of uh, one. And uh, this is sort of the entry point to the discussion. And now we go uh, to the next design. And that would be to make the same uh, basic principle. So it's modular. You will have the same basic uh, construction. And then uh, this basic construction um, has around uh, for uh, six by six meters, um, uh, that's around uh, roughly 20 by 20 feet. <clears throat> uh, I've worked on this for years and years. I had students working on the designs. And so this is not just something what is, has just popped up. It looks so simple, but there is a lot of labor behind developing this. So ideally, uh, there is one bigger room to the south side with big windows and uh, then uh, there is a uh, place where you can uh, put your uh, well sofa but not a conventional sofa you take something with draw out uh, with drawers underneath to to create space uh, then there can be a, a kitchen and you may have some something where you can sit around for a meal, uh, whatever, sink and uh, stove at a window, of course. And so this could make a nice design. And then you have a separate room where you can close the door. It's important if two people are sharing a small house that you can close a door. And that could be a, um, a bedroom or you can make the bedroom uh, uh, above the uh, um, the bathroom, so that would be also an option. Um, and um, it's either the entry from here, or you can also make the entry through the living room. That's also a possibility. Um, and uh, this way, you would have a door here. Uh, so that's the, the entrance door then, uh, but it could uh, be made in, in uh, different ways, obviously. Um, so that's the basic module. And uh, as I've shown you before, you can either make a, a pyramid roof with minimum 22 degrees. Uh, because below that, uh, the tiles are uh, not really uh, tight. And with 22 degrees, it would still be possible to make a, a green roof if you uh, want. Of course, you make, can make flat roofs, but that's not so uh, good from the perspective of the, um, well, looking at it from energy flows, the subtle energies. Um, that also needs to be respected. And that's also one of the reasons that we make these uh, not not straight edges, but like this. So the it feels a lot better. Everybody feels that, but that can be planned. Uh, 150 years back, this was all normal and it was pushed aside by arrogant science that, that pretends knowing everything, uh, but behaves like uh, idiots. Uh, basically, without the the, the well, simple, most simple knowledge of basic life uh, sustaining energies, and uh, so um, the the other module I've shown you with the uh, pyramid roof. Now the same thing can be done. Ah, yeah, first my picture. So this is I'm building this thing at the moment. So this is. Uh, 
my mini modular house uh, as as it is now now it's snow covered at the moment we are here in the north of uh, germany near river elbe and uh, so this is the inside is six by six meters and um, this one um, has uh, bricks um, because I want to make the second floor uh, that comes above this in uh, massive wood. And uh, so I didn't want to make too many experiments. Uh, so this is just the solid way of construction, relatively cost efficient, long life, like 500 years possible. And uh, so well insulated and uh, so this is the the basic module and um, the um, like the um, construction of that is what i've shown you before so it's this one uh, this one is what is ready so far but now if you want to make it bigger and that's what i want to do um, so it uh, we plan a module with uh, two flats basically it could be used as a family house but uh, my children will be out of the house by that time when i move there so uh, i don't need um, rooms for children so it will be two flats but if somebody else in the following maybe 500 years wants to have this as a family house that can be used as that but uh, if you don't go for a full second floor, you can have a ridge roof. So this would be uh, the roof. If you look from the side, it's this side. Um, and uh, so that would be also suitable. And uh, with that, you have space uh, upstairs. So you can make another uh, full room up there with a small flat and uh, that can be done later on. So first relatively cheap construction with just one floor and maybe a greenhouse. And then you can further extend that later on with uh, adding space in the, in the roof. So that would be a small flat in the top that is um, independent uh, it's it's really good to have uh, separate entrance doors so that uh, utilizing it is flexible and if you want to uh, connect it you can just uh, make a sort of a, a stairwell here that's not very nice but make uh, something part of the greenhouse and that would be something that could be there. Um, now, uh, well, there it is. <laughs> and um, so the um, possibilities that are there are uh, manifold. Of course, you could, could, roof this, uh, could leave this uh, roof open to the living room and make a sort of a second floor um, upstairs. So that would be a design uh, like this uh, to have the the module is here then you have this big roof and then you could make a like a sort of attic but then you need a small stair inside so I don't want the stair uh, a stair inside because that makes takes a lot of space and makes uh, utilization very inflexible uh, but that could also be closed with a door, whatever. So there are many options, uh, whatever the people building it uh, would prefer. So that's um, the mini modular house, uh, two flats, um, small one in the roof, uh, um, not, not just as small one down below. Both are very small. The, the, greenhouse expands living space but <clears throat> as said before you have the space outside you have green region around you have the beauty the trees and and all that around you uh, food trees at that so you can also go outside and 
eat something you you have some plants in your greenhouse and so on so it's very different than a small footprint in a city so now the next one would be uh, to uh, put two of these modules side by side so that would be one of the modules as i've shown that's the other one and now they can be put uh, side by side in between there is a um, huge uh, greenhouse possible you can make two separate uh, entrance doors so to have two separate flats even if you don't plan that so a couple with children uh, builds a house like house like that but then they well may separate and uh, if you have two entrance doors maybe you can both parents stay there and can arrange some way um, and both stay near the children and uh, the other case um, children getting older uh, they move away so they you can um, sublet one of the flats uh, when people get older you can uh, have well this one rented out to a person who does elderly care and so on so there are uh, many options and uh, so that's why I like these designs. Uh, the downside of this obviously is that you eat up quite a bit of spice. And uh, so I personally prefer to put two on top of each other. And this is the design I'm uh, building at the moment. I've shown you uh, the lower part that is constructed already. And the upper part uh, is planned for this year. Um, 2021 and um, we um, are well having a solar uh, 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 unit uh, we want to make the house uh, independent of the grid so some solar panels like that we have a very little energy footprint and um, I actually changed the plans by now so I'm uh, moving these guys down in front of the terrace to get them further away from where we live because uh, such installations are not so nice for from because they create some um, fields uh, that are not so pleasant I can sense these things and uh, so I want to have them further away there are reports from farmers that have put a lot of uh, photovoltaics um, on uh, the roofs uh, of the um, well, the stables of the of the animals, uh, and uh, the animals didn't want to move in anymore and things like that. So we should be more careful with this technology. Uh, one thing about um, uh, hot water. Of course, inside we will have a, a relatively big, uh, well insulated hot water thing. And until a few years back, I was always promoting these thermal uh, uh, solar uh, panels, solar installations that would heat up uh, the water in the tank. Uh, but it has now become obvious that it makes a lot more sense. Uh, to put the heat in from through electricity from the PV so that will be electricity um, it's uh, only one system and if you have excess of electricity you can either uh, sell it into the grid or fill batteries maybe batteries of the whole settlement with the neighborhood smart grid uh, whatever and with that you can have a very much uh, easier installation it's more cost efficient and energy wise it uh, it's almost the same uh, output uh, you have little losses and um, with that <clears throat> and and that's not my opinion I've learned this from experts who are well installing these things uh, on a daily basis and uh, so they have told me that this is uh, much better system but that's the house um, as it will be built and uh, in the upper one 
the room is open to the into the ceiling so that will also give a give an open feeling and of course i like to be uh, upstairs so that's why uh, i prefer to be in the in the upper floor and also here there is view on the river elbe from there so that's also something what i really enjoy um right so uh these are the different types um in this case with the lego and uh, these are the different options here in the background you see our uh, container toilet that we have developed at the institute uh, but that's a different story there are presentations on that also in this uh, youtube channel and um, you can use these designs but please refer to me so creative commons uh, with reference um, this is another view on um, the design here and so that's uh, how it shall look at the at, in the end and um, well I'm, I'm really looking forward to moving there in like two two three years time and to really experience this type of house as i said uh, in the city i want to have a big flat of course with a with a balcony with a garden and all the city houses in big cities should have roof gardens to give people access to green space to make it uh, normal for children to experience uh, vegetables growing it's a tragedy that many children today don't know that uh, carrots grow underground so it's like this is a like uh, people are going insane so they are not really having the most basic knowledge of survival anymore and just relying on uh, everything coming from somewhere in the world and uh, if electricity fails cities are a disaster and it can fail so if, uh, if there is a major solar flare with our very weak uh, magnetic field at the moment uh, it will not be such a big deal in rural areas where people take a little bit of precaution um, but uh, in cities people will uh, have a very hard time even surviving all right so um, now a little bit on making it pleasant so of course uh, if you design something you tend to make straight lines but there is a good reason for straight lines too it's uh, from construction if you have big logs uh, it's easier to make them into straight walls uh, it's different with uh, mud you can make mud uh, very much rounded uh, but here for the wood construction uh, the walls they are uh, 35 centimeters thick so that's a passive passive house then uh, without liners of course so that the vapor goes out and uh, these are um, the walls in several layers of uh, wood that is locally produced and harvested at uh, well, specific, uh, specifically in winter time, where that applies, and uh, the moon phase, um, water content in wood is fluctuating with the moon cycle. That is scientifically proven and can be found out experimentally very, very easily. And uh, so um, that's why uh, I have. Um, also made it in that way also can make it very very long lasting uh, the, the name is uh, uh, moon phase wood or something um, and um, only because people in in the village where i built my house now they have heard about well this is house from uh, moon phases they are now calling this house the moon house and <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, 
but it's people are so ignorant it's just just uh, just crazy um, so um, I want to combine um, massive wood in the outside with mud in the inside because that has advantages of uh, storing water and heat and so the inside walls are planned to be from uh, handmade mud bricks as I said don't press them and so with that you can really make very nice round designs also and so go around that uh, water hot water tank and so on and this is something where uh, I like to highlight the uh, edges of the house so to make it not really square uh, the idea is to make them either cut them out and put something else in between and so that we have uh, like an, an outside of the wall and the inside like this round it a bit you can even make it round in mud or wood uh, so then it will look a lot more uh, well pleasant it's it's a lot more uh, appealing to our senses whether you um, sense the subtle energies or not that doesn't matter we all are uh, living from it so whether we we realize it or not and just being blissfully ignorant doesn't mean these things aren't there and those who like to do that can uh, well make it in, in that way so that's uh, a bit about uh, the construction here by the way the same can be done in the windows with these thick walls uh, it can be really nice to also make them in in such a shape uh, so that you have a better uh, view outside okay so with that being said and I think that's what I wanted to have here um, by the way the, the name of this one is uh, uh, the square square uh, square hobbit I don't know it's a hobbit house I, I don't know if you know about this idea but uh, this is like combining building uh, with straight lines and materials but uh, making it uh, rounded enough to be uh, pleasant and uh, harmonic uh, all right so um, I'm think I think that's all for this one and with that I like to wrap up um, so uh, just to repeat a few of the key things I have said so 500 years planning time uh, materials will be uh, massive wood um, mud bricks not pressing them just filling the forms with the hands and then air drying the mixture is crucial obviously and then you can use conventional bricks uh, as you find them in everywhere in the world uh, also made from mud but uh, they are uh, well melted with uh, big uh, ovens so it has quite a energy uh, a footprint uh, but uh, if it lives for 500 years uh, there is no worry in that if it if, if it lives a few hundred years longer for that it's energy very well invested um, then a uh, few words about the modular form um, uh, so 
modules uh, and have one different roof forms put two on top of each other uh, attach them make something like that whatever so it's like it's up to you what you want to create here. And uh, finally, a word of something I haven't mentioned, uh, but I will uh, do now. Uh, being transportable, like uh, the tiny houses with their nice wheels, uh, looking attractive, but it's like they have their downsides. And um, we still can make the modules transportable and that is if we build them in a way that um, the module so as i said my module is like this and the wall is almost in the middle um, so you can build this house in a way and you can build this on site in this way um, or you can build them in a, um, in a workshop and transport it there, but it has a lot of upsides to build it on site. And uh, this is something where you can build it in a way uh, that these modules are um, strong in themselves. And then um, you will just uh, screw them together uh so that they could be uh, taken apart and then you can uh load them uh on a on a truck for example uh take the measures and then you can uh truck the whole thing out to a new home uh, because there is one thing specifically for the rural areas if you pick the wrong place and uh, other people are not coming with you as planned or you decide to go somebody, somewhere else, uh, sometimes it's really difficult to sell a house in such places. Even it can become a burden, so you cannot only not sell it, but you have to uh, put money in to keep it alive or pay taxes for the ground and nobody wants to get that so then you can just take it apart move it elsewhere or sell it to somebody who is collecting it and it could should fit on conventional container trucks so so that you don't make it exotic to make that transport container trucks are relatively cheap to uh, to hire and of course you leave it you need a massive crane to to pack it so that's one of the downsides there uh, but as i said uh, these tinies they have their wheels uh, on there for a lifetime hardly ever used and um, uh, that's very expensive and uh, um, well they are re relatively narrow so it's limited um, options for design I, I still like them but they normally are not very energy efficient even if they are well built because the walls can be so small and those don't make it 500 years so that doesn't doesn't happen uh, probably not who knows so maybe somebody builds them so well um, but I see the decay in my own so it's a lot of work to to be put in all the time all right with that being said um, i would like to wrap up and uh, this is the story uh, from tiny towards modular mini houses and uh, i hope you enjoyed this uh, presentation and please if you like uh, join the discussion below and uh, i We'll try to answer to it. Uh, if somebody has good ideas, I'm always open for, for that. And um, until then, uh, all the best. Uh, thank you for your participation. Bye bye.